Hi, I'm Susan, and I'm 25 years old. It feels kind of odd sharing my life story now, but it feels like the right time. About a year ago, the love of my life, Jeremy, finally proposed to me. It was magical. He went down on one knee while we were roaming Sunset Beach in California on a holiday. I would have said yes a million times if I could. Overjoyed, we went to celebrate our evening with some fine dining. I couldn't have been happier. I had known and loved Jeremy for three years, so at that point, if he hadn't proposed, I was probably going to. As we had dinner, we discussed the wedding we would have. I said, you know this, honey. I've always dreamed of a big wedding. All of my family with all of yours is going to be so dreamy. Calm down, Susie. Let's take our time this year. We need to plan the money first, you know. Nothing works without it. He laughed it off, but I was way too excited for us. There was also a big secret in the making that I wanted to keep from Jeremy until I was certain. I knew once he found out, he'd be over the moon with happiness. But all things have a time, so until then, I was keeping it quiet. Slowly, the days rolled into months. I bought myself the perfect wedding dress and started picking out the venues with him. We'd spend our weekends driving around town. We went to cathedrals, small churches, and so many other places that it left us no time for anything else. I'm the organized type, so I was keeping a list of every single thing. The type of flowers we'd have, the dress code, food, everything. But in all of this, we forgot maybe the most important detail, meeting our families. I wanted to wait until everything about the wedding was fixed, but Jeremy wanted me to meet his mother. I was a bit scared because I'd never really talked to her before, but he had me convinced it would be all right. Mom is going to love you. She used to be a lawyer, so she can be a bit straightforward, but that's just how she is. Don't overthink it he said. Okay, I'll try my best. I had to see her someday anyway. I just hope it goes well. We drove to her place after work on a Tuesday evening. It was a pretty house, not too big, but not too small either. She opened the door and greeted us. Oh, my darling, how are you? It's been so long since you came home last. Don't you miss your mother? Hey, mom. Of course I missed you but it's not about us today. I want you to meet someone. This is the love of my life, Susan. So you're the one looking to steal my son from me, huh? She laughed and came in for a hug. No, of course not. Just borrowing him for a little bit, I'd say. Oh well, I'd be happy to lend him at the right price. Come on in, let's eat. Nice family dinner for everyone. We went inside the house. I was told that Jeremy's dad was not home at the time. He was attending to business and would only join us later on for dinner, maybe. My mother-in-law often spends time in the house alone, waiting for him to come so they can spend time together. I think that's a very deep bond and it only made me more excited to meet Jeremy's dad. However, that day, my excitement would soon start slowly melting away. It's probably because of the conversation that came up at the table that day. To me, Cynthia seemed a bit too old school, and I'm trying to be respectful here, because that's not a term anyone else would use. I remember how she brought this up. She asked me, So, Susan, I was just wondering, how much do you usually make in a year? The question took me aback. Why was she asking about my salary out of the blue? I make enough, I suppose. I'm a key member of this startup and get paid pretty decently. Sometimes more if I get some incentive for performance. Anyway, I've always felt experiences are far more important in any field. Cynthia seemed impressed, or maybe she was shocked. I really couldn't tell from the vague expression she had on. Interesting. You know, my Jeremy makes about $70,000 a year. Why are we bringing this up? Oh, it's nothing. 
I just thought that maybe you two should really start thinking about the money. After all, being a woman takes its toll, doesn't it, Susan? I was confused. Did she mean being a woman would be more expensive? I didn't say anything, just nodded along because I had no clue what she was going on about. The conversation ended right there, and we sat around talking about how he and I met and fell in love. I felt like revealing my secret to both Cynthia and Jeremy, but the moment didn't feel right. A few hours later, Jeremy's dad, Bob, finally joined us. He looked like he was easily in his 50s. There was a lot of gray in his beard. Bob was a pensive man. When he laughed, it was never more than a shy chuckle. His agreements were slight nods and disagreements, a quiver of his lips. He didn't say much. All this while, Cynthia was a complete chatterbox, like Jeremy, but I had no idea that she and I would get along less and less after that day. Her views of womanhood were the most surprising to me. I am an only child and was raised with pride. I was asked to never look down on anyone, especially myself, even in tricky circumstances. Cynthia was someone who had accomplished herself in the court by the time she had Jeremy, so it was really like a shockwave when she said, before you guys get married, I strongly suggest getting a prenup. I mean, you understand, right, Susan? You're smart. You know women can never really make as much money as men. I was stunned by the statement. The food I was chewing on just stopped where it was. What was I supposed to say? Then Jeremy stepped in. Mom, we've talked about this. When are you going to quit saying things like that while we're eating, too? Oh, come on, honey bun. You know how things are. I've never made as much as your father out of respect. You think I couldn't have if I wanted to. It's just how things are. You understand, right, Susan, darling. I understand your concern about the prenup, Cynthia, but I don't get why you think women can't make as much as men. I mean, I do technically make more than him right now, and we're not tense about it. It's completely normal. Maybe so, but that's how things work in this household. I was hoping you'd be a bit more considerate. That for me was strike one. Jeremy and I were desperately in love, so we never really thought about getting a prenup. The subject had come up, but we disregarded it. Now Cynthia was actively trying to force it on us. More specifically, on me. She thought I needed to save my money to raise children and buy kitchenware. I was sure there was more to it than she let on. Slowly, we kept having more and more conversations like this one. It was all a bit scary because the day of the wedding was coming closer. Jeremy thought it was a good idea to take Cynthia and Bob with us on a Sunday to see the venues we'd shortlisted. So we went to this beautiful church in the west of the city. It was a magnificent place with so much beauty, I wish I was good enough to describe it. This was most likely going to be the place because Jeremy and I loved it. But since we were not members of that church in particular, we would have to pay for the place. There were also the costs for the minister's time as well as tokens of gratitude for letting us use the place. The bottom line is, it was going to be expensive especially if you add in the cost of the dinner after party at a different venue. Cynthia and Bob looked impressed, to say the least. They walked around the church together and inspected every corner with amazement in their eyes. So far, there has been no negativity. I was feeling a bit relieved, but my relief would prove to be short-lived when Cynthia came back. The place looks amazing. Amazing. I knew my boy had good taste. Actually, Susan picked this one out, Mum. She worked hard to find it. It's so far from where we live, but so perfect, I said. Oh, well, that's lovely then, but I hope she's not looking to pay for all of this. That's a gentleman's job, isn't that right, hun? Cynthia asked. In response, Bob just gave a sly little smile and nodded a yes before saying, our son will take care of all of this. 
you won't spend a single penny, Susan. We're planning on splitting the costs of everything. What you're seeing is just the church. The decorations and the dinner and dance party later on are all ten times more amazing, I replied. Oh, darling, but you need to keep your money to yourself. We don't need you to spend it. And did you think about getting your prenuptial? Cynthia pressed. Cynthia, why do you keep asking us to get a prenup? I think we're going to be a very happy couple with enough finances. I said, Oh, you say that today, but what if you come to my son's bank in the next two years? I hope it never comes to pass, but honey, I've seen many divorces. Women can become so selfish when they make less. You can't blame me for being cautious. Are you trying to say I'm marrying him for the money, Cynthia? That's such a terrible accusation. Oh, love, I'm not accusing you of anything. I'm just saying it's worth considering. Me and Bob here got a prenup, and we're doing wonderfully. All I had to do was make less than him, and he was happy. I am sure a young woman like you can do that for Jeremy, too, right? Oh, my God, Mom. It's like you're not even trying to hear her out. It's not the way we do things anymore. Jeremy interjected. Wait, look, Cynthia, I really don't like the way you seem to think about women, but I'll let it go for now. I'm sure we can talk about it at home. And about the prenups, if it matters to you that much, we'll give it some thought. Okay, does that make you happy? Oh, the happiest, she said and gave me the fakest hug I've ever had. The drive home was so awkward with the two of them in the back. Me and Jeremy couldn't talk about the things that were going on at the time, so we held back. Once we went back to our place, we decided to bring it up. I feel so bad about all of this. I hoped she changed a bit, but in all these years, there's nothing, Jeremy said. It's okay. I get it. I'm not happy with how she thinks. It almost disgusts me, but I can give the prenups more thought if you're okay with it. I have nothing against it, my love. You know that. I just don't think we'll ever need them, but she's been so annoyingly persistent. Honestly, I love her, but she can get on my nerves too sometimes. It's okay. I don't want to ruin your bond with your mother. If it makes her happy, we'll get the prenups done. Let's just find a good lawyer. Fine, let's take a little break from the wedding plans then. Not a very long one, though. I really can't wait to see you in the white dress, honey. Things like this are what made me fall in love with this man. We were adaptable. We'd adjust to any situation without compromising each other. That right there is what true love looks like. So we took some time from work and got our prenup agreement straight. He would keep what's his, and I would keep what's mine if things were to ever go sideways. Now Cynthia was happy. There was a bounce in her walk now, which wasn't there before. And here I was, still unsure why exactly she wanted us to get the prenup. Surely the reason had to be deeper. It would all come clean to me when we decided to spend a night with Jeremy's parents. The night was great. We had a barbecue and danced around. Cynthia didn't bring up anything negative the whole time. Honestly, I felt like the storm had blown over. Jeremy had to go to work the next morning, but I had an off, so I was still in bed that morning. But Cynthia didn't know I was awake already, and so I heard her talking about something on call. Oh yes, they finally signed it. I'm so happy right now, you have no idea, Mary, Cynthia said. Mary was Jeremy's aunt and her sister. I couldn't believe she was already spreading the news all over the place. I don't know about this girl. I mean, she seems nice and decent, but come on, you know Jeremy. He's too innocent, never really learned how to grow up and look out for himself. And honestly, he can do so much better than her, I swear. I was shattered. I knew she was a bit strange, but this. Jeremy loved me with all his heart. Why would she even say something like that? I'd done nothing to hurt him in all the time we'd been together. 
I didn't make a sound, though. The bedroom door was slightly open, and I kept hearing the conversation as she passed around the hall doing chores. Oh, please, Mary, stop taking her side. You haven't even met her. You'll see what I'm talking about when you meet her. And one day Jeremy will see too, and then he's going to want to divorce her. And then what? She would have taken everything we have. I almost felt like crying. Even Mary seemed like she was being a bit more humane at the time, and she didn't even know me. How could a stranger understand you better than your mother-in-law? It was heartbreaking. Look, don't tell anyone, okay. The thing is, Bob's getting old and tired now, you know it. He just wants to sit in a chair and sleep all day if he can. He wants to give the business to Jeremy to handle all of it. It's not like we have another son, right? We were just scared that this random woman he fell in love with would take all the money from him. I mean, why wouldn't she? If she wants to make more money than him, why wouldn't she think of just taking all he has? What was even going on? Why would I take his money? I had enough of my own. At that moment, I began truly despising her for the way she thought. It was as if every woman was her son's enemy for her. Suddenly, the reasons for her wanting a prenup had become so clear. This was why she wanted to keep me submissive. It all just made sense. I couldn't take all the information, and tears began rolling down my face. I made sure she wouldn't hear me, though. It was a tough time, but I powered through anyway. And more importantly, Cynthia wasn't the only one with a secret. The thing is, I'd been working with my startup for a few years now. I saw its initial days and helped expand it to so many states. Now our current CEO, Edgar, was stepping down because he wanted to jumpstart his own separate venture, and he thought it best for me to take up the decision instead. I'd been unsure about taking it up so far, but now I was sure. And that's the news I had to break to Jeremy, and oh boy, I will, just in a way no one would have expected. And so it began. The wedding day was going to be upon us soon. I had big plans, and I wanted Jeremy to be a part of them, but I wasn't going to tell him everything. He had to know about the promotion first, though. So when we were alone at our place, I decided to tell him. Hey, hon, I think there's something you should know. Okay, what is it? Is it about my mom? No, no, it's not. It's about me. About us. Jeremy sat down on a chair with a worried face. He probably thought it was bad news by the way things were going between me and his mom. I couldn't wait to turn that frown upside down. So you remember how I told you this one time that Edgar kind of wanted to start his own thing? Your boss, Edgar. Yeah, I think you did. It was a while ago, though, like almost a year ago. Yes, it was. Well, he is going to leave us. He's got everything planned out for his next move, and I sat down next to him. Someone needs to fill in his position, and he wants it to be me. What? Are you serious? He looked amazed and shocked at the same time. I couldn't contain my joy. Yes, honey. It's a big promotion. Oh my God, I'm so proud of you. We embraced for what felt like ours. I was so happy to have someone so happy and excited for me. It was nothing short of a blessing. Things started being smooth between me and Cynthia, but it was like the calm before the storm. She would give me looks and say things like, don't you ever worry, Susan. If you ever get fired or want to quit your job for your kids, we'll keep you happy, which always infuriated me. But I didn't strike back too hard at her. I'd keep my composure until it was time. When the day was finally upon us, we made sure we invited everyone, my parents, his, and my work friends. Yes, that included Edgar as well. He was an old but gentle man with blue eyes. Edgar had a son who was about my age, and he brought his whole family with him to the wedding. The church was adorned beautifully. The flowers, the dress, 
and the decorations were all handpicked by the two of us. We didn't get a chance to talk much during the ceremony, but it was during the after party that Cynthia's mind was blown away. We were standing around, greeting everyone, when Cynthia and Bob arrived straight from the church. Oh, darling, you look so beautiful. I can't believe it. And you too, Susan. Everything was so perfect. I knew my son wouldn't be a cheapskate when it comes to big celebrations. Oh, I'm so proud. Uh, actually, I didn't pay for anything, Mom, but thanks. I appreciate the gesture. What do you mean you didn't pay? So you went with the split? No, not that either. Susan paid for everything. There is no way, even at your salary, you could have afforded this, darling. Where did this money come from? Actually, Cynthia, I quit my job. I have another job now. What? Another job? It was right then that I saw Edgar and his family walk in. Everything was working perfectly. I went to get Edgar so he could meet my in-laws. This is Edgar. Edgar, these are my in-laws, Cynthia and Bob. Oh, hello, Bob. I've heard you're a businessman, too. How proud are you of having this one around? He said, looking at me and laughing. Oh, very. I assume you're a businessman, too, then. Ah, yes, I used to be her boss. You used to be? Yeah. Susan, you haven't told them about it. I thought they would know by now. I was just going to, actually, but I thought it would be better if you did the honors. Nobody likes singing their own praises, Edgar. He laughs and nods his head. He's always been a jolly man. Oh, wow. Then let me break it to you. Susan is now CEO of the company a bunch of us started five years ago. I think she'll bring great success to it in my absence, especially with all of you supporting her. I've been so glad to be invited to the wedding. My son's getting married, too, in a few months. Susan's entire family will always be on the guest list, okay? Of course, we'll all be there. Good. Now I'll let you guys be. With that, Edgar left to join his family for dinner, and the effect was as expected. Cynthia and Bob had their jaws on the floor for a good minute. Oh, why didn't you tell us, love? Exactly. I didn't even know you were conducting such great business. I just wanted it to be a surprise. And if you've been wondering, that's how I paid for everything. Unbelievable. This is such great news. We have to celebrate alone as a family. I'm so sorry I've been so hard on you, Susan. Really, you are perfect for our boy. And you know what? Forget about the prenup thing, too. I'll be happy even if you don't want to do them. We already did them, Mom, like you asked. What? Really? But you can reverse them, right? I mean, it's not like you'd ever split, is it? No, but we felt like your advice was right. He keeps his money, and I keep mine. Isn't that exactly what you wanted? But, but what if Jeremy wants to be a part of your business? Do you want to be a part of it, Jeremy? Not really. I'm happy as it is. He's happy, Cynthia. Their food is ready. I'd say you better eat it before it goes cold. And that's just how things ended. Cynthia was blown away, and as expected, she tried to go for as much money as possible. Meanwhile, I had love, and that's all you ever need. Thank you.